Yeah. Hell of a game. Michael, I just heard you tell Jared Green yeah. one at a time. That one was on the record. Uh, what do you tell? What do you tell your guys after this one? Yeah. Well, one that you know how proud I am of them. You know, uh, could easily have just rolled over, given in, uh, and not brought the the fight. Uh, and you asked me before the game, what are we going to do that? And, and I said, no way, that's not us. So proud of them for that. Um, but we're not just going out, you know, out to Golden State to close the series out. We're trying to bring it back. Uh, obviously, we're, 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 out of all teams in the playoffs, I think we're probably the most comfortable being down 3-1. Can I say we have them right where we want them? No. Uh, but we're alive. You know, we, we live to fight another day. Uh, Nicola was phenomenal throughout. I thought Monte Morris to close the game, his poise, playmaking, shot making, decision making was instrumental. Uh, Aaron Gordon has had two back to back games of the Aaron Gordon that we need and love. Uh, and I, I have to get bones Highland. I mean, um, I asked Andrew Munson, our, our video coordinator, earlier today, I said, who's going to be the X Factor tonight? And he said, Bones Highland. And I said, you're going with the rookie, huh? And Bones Highland had a great first half, gave us life, gave us energy. And Will Barton, man, that, that three he hit, I tell you what, that was a big, big play. So, um, yeah, we're just going to go out back there. And, uh, again, all the pressure is on them to close us out. That's the toughest game in a series is to close that game. If we play like we did in game three and four, we're going to give ourselves a chance once again. And we've won on their court. You know, we know how to do it in San Francisco, uh, and that is our challenge. You always have said that after uh, the last game that, coming back in the past and play more freely. You didn't understand why they weren't doing, you guys weren't doing that to this point. Do so you feel like they did play freely? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think our starting unit played well. I thought the bench unit, I think they epitomized playing freely. Uh, I felt like Bones, Austin, Bren in the first half, Jamichael, DeMarc, like those guys gave us really valuable minutes. And to see Bones Highland just kind of embrace the atmosphere, the ambiance, and not be scared of it, that was that was like really fun to watch. I had fun. I re I really did. I I was I was at peace all game regardless of the result because of how we were playing. You know, as a coach, that's all you can ask for. So yeah, I felt we played free tonight, and uh, we have to do the same thing on the road in a very hostile environment. Oh, I, I said after game three how big of a factor they were, and uh, and, and I think today even more so. Um, in my seven years, when you, when you think about year one to now and the crowd and the, and the support and the advantage, it's amazing what we've been able to accomplish. And the fans are a really big part of that. Uh, so once again, I thank all of our fans. And when we come back for game six, we need the same thing. What are you laughing at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, and I talked with uh, with Monte for a while after practice yesterday, just trying to, you know, get into his head. How's he feeling? Asking what I can do to help him just kind of settle down and play his game. Um, and, and he went out there and played a vintage Monte Morris playoff game. And to your point, kids, in that third quarter, his three ball, like we were trading baskets, we gave up 37 points that quarter, but we were able to hang with them. And Monte was a big part of that. Uh, and my favorite part about uh, the foul on, on on Draymond was, you know, I love it when Monte flexes. That's like that's like me flexing. You know, what are you what are you flexing? But he, he he had a big smile on his face, like he he enjoyed it. And our challenge coming home from San Francisco was, and it wasn't just me saying it. What I love about our team, they owned it. We were not physical enough. We were not aggressive enough. They didn't feel us enough. And I really feel in games three and four a a marked difference in terms of all those intangibles. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, hey, some people shy away from contact, some people thrive on it, um, and, and I think that's who we have to be. Uh, like, Aaron Gordon's a great example. Like, I think game one and two, he was a, a, a shell of himself. And I think he was, he was frustrated. He's trying to figure things out. In game three and four, Aaron Gordon said, you know what, I'm just going to go out here and play aggressive, be physical, and make things happen. And, and, he, and he did that as well tonight. So um, we forced him into 17, uh, 17 turnovers for 30 points. To do that, you have to be into people. You know that, kids. We have to be making them feel us. And I go back to my father with the New York Knicks and John Starks, man. Make them feel you. Make them feel you. And I, I felt we did that tonight, and we have to even be better coming, uh, you know, coming up in Game Five in San Fran. Uh, he, 
Well, he won the defensive player of the game again against this team. Um, I thought Aaron, you know, I think a big key tonight, Katie, was, you know, Jordan Poole's been the leading scorer. He, he's just crushed us. So to hold him to 11 points, I thought Aaron Gordon was great on him. Uh, and then I think, you know, Austin Rivers guarding Poole, guarding Curry, just being relentless. He had five steals at halftime, uh, and he was a big part of, of being that disruptive force on our defense. So uh, that was key. And for the first time this series, you know, we said one of the keys is how do you take away the three-point line against a great three-point shooting team? They were making 17 threes a game on 44% the first three games. Well, tonight they only made 12. We gave ourselves a chance in that regard. So um, I'm just so proud of our guys. man. I, the, the thing that was keeping me up at night, um, aside from my daughter's going to a prom, was just uh, I didn't want to get swept. I did not want to get swept. You know, there's something about getting swept that just eats at you at your core. Uh, so I, I, I'm thrilled that we're, we're still alive, we're not satisfied, but we, uh, we, we can regroup and head out to San Francisco and try to find a way. Well, I'll be honest, Om, like I wasn't wondering about that. I think everybody else was. Um, you know, after I addressed it uh, very loud and clear in the locker room after the game, uh, that was my directive was when we get on this plane, we're unified, we're together, and we leave all this stuff here in San Francisco. That's the only chance we have to beat a great team. And I think you can tell by the way we've played the last two games that we are unified, we are together. And that's how we're going out to San Francisco, a together team that feels we let one slide in game three, we pulled off game four, and now we have a great opportunity in front of us. What is, your, what is your trust level in that rookie? I tell you, man, like uh, we've seen it all year long. You know, fearless is a word that we've used to describe him many times. And uh, what a great experience for a young kid. Playoff stage, national stage. Regular season is one thing, you know, but when you make, you make your name in the playoffs. And I think Bones Highland's performance today just kind of showed that he is a tough kid mentally, physically, not afraid of the moment. And uh, we don't win that game without him. So, yes, I do trust Bones Highland. Um, I put him in to close the half, and uh, he turns the ball over. We get it back. He goes coast to coast and scores a layup. So I think that sequence kind of epitomizes what rookies are all about. They're going to do some things sometimes. You say, all right, we got to live with this. But you know down the road, this is only going to benefit his development and our development. What was a uh, close decision to put him in at the end of the game, too, where you're going back and forth in line, or were you good with what you yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, we, we were definitely considering different options. Obviously, we went offense, defense a few times down the stretch. Um, but knowing that you have a guy like Bowen Sion that you can go to, knowing that you can go to a Jeff Green who's been sitting, and when you want to get another guy in the game as an inbounder, that play is really important. Like, Jeff Green's our inbounder to get the ball in bounce, and obviously we wound up scoring on the ensuing possession to put it to five. So, um, yeah, this was a collective win. Very proud of our group. So you knew they were going to make a run there late in the game. They had so many weapons. On possessions where you always have push up Curry, was that the play called? No. No, that was uh, that was a blown coverage. Um, we 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 don't never want Nicola guarding Steph Curry one on one. If he does get switched on to him, Matt, we have to come and provide help. And one time we tried to do that, and Steph drove away from the help and got to the basket to his left hand. So yeah, that those are some of the cleanups. You know, we we can't leave Nicola on an island. Uh, you know, it was a two time MVP being guarded by a soon to be two time MVP, and we want to avoid that at all costs. I didn't go. I, I wasn't there, but uh, she got home safely, and that's all I care about, as all fathers know. Last one, Chris. Talk a little bit uh, more about Mark's three. Yeah. Yeah. Played a little lot. Uh, what was the growing up? Yeah, it was. Um, well, so I, I give Will credit because, as you said, I got him out early in the third quarter. I got Austin in, you know, for the defense. I thought we were giving up some easy, easy threes. So. You know, that speaks to Will's ability to stick with it, stay with it. Um, and the play was just two-man game between Nicola and Monte. They attract so much attention, spread the floor. And we always talk about the open man wins. And, uh, you know, we made a great pass on time, on target, and Will did the rest. So I think it speaks to Will Barton's maturity, staying ready, staying in the moment, and realizing at this time of the year, it's never about me. It's always about we. What's going to help us win a game? And uh, and I was proud of Will for for staying with it and making a huge play for us. All right. Thanks, everybody.